What up, guys? It's your man with a plan. Yes, guys, happy Halloween. Um, uh, I don't have good lighting, and it's like 10 o'clock at night, so it's dark out, and I'm in my office little space room thingy, and, um, I don't have any lighting. And there's a light up here that really sucks. You can't even barely even see it. I think you can see it, like, right there. You can see it, like, right there. The little speck. But we have a flashlight right here pointed on me to make this video spooky. Anyways, guys, uh, we are here to review, um, a wrestling pay-per-view. Because, guys, uh, as most of you guys know or don't know, I recently, um, stopped uploading videos on my wrestling channel because I did not have enough time to put videos on that channel. Um, I would put more videos on that channel than I would this channel or put vice versa throughout the week. Plus, I, uh, took down my Collections Connections channel, guys, and am no longer posting videos on that for the same reason. So, guys, let's get right into this first review on the channel. Uh, we are going to be reviewing... The match, the pay-per-view that just happened tonight, uh, well, at 1 o'clock this afternoon, it was in Saudi Arabia, WWE hosted a pay-per-view called Crown Jewel on Halloween Day. Um, and guys, there's a couple good matches, but, um, some of them kind of sucked. Like, really, really sucked. So... I'm going to go through each match one by one, and I'm going to tell you which ones gets an up and which ones suck. So, anyways, guys, let's get right into it, starting with the very first match. Okay? Okay. Now, starting out with the first match on the pre-show, we had a big battle royal. I don't remember how many people were actually in the Battle Royal, but it was a lot, and, um, it was a lot of people, like, a lot, um, not really, like, I think there was 30, I'm underestimating it, anyways, guys, but we had a bunch of people in it, from R-Truth, to, um, one of the Singh brothers, to Luke Harper, and Eric Rowan, and also, we had the new guy that just started out, uh, for, don't really know how to pronounce his name, so don't get mad at me guys in the comments about it, but, uh, we had that wrestler, Alberto Colon, who actually went on to win the match, um, it came down to him, somebody else I don't really remember, <laughs> Uh, and then Eric Rowan and Luke Harper, and it came down to, when it came down to Luke Harper and Eric Rowan, um, Alberto Colon got thrown over by, I believe, Luke Harper, or almost got thrown over by Luke Harper, and, like, went, and went over the top rope and came from under the bottom rope through his legs, and then at that point, Eric Rowan had pushed Luke Harper out, and then Colon had pushed out. Eric Rowan winning the match and what he won in the match was a title shot later in the night to face the United States champion AJ Styles um now I think this match was stupid because one we already got this match this past Raw and I thought it was really 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 stupid that we just got another match just for the United States title and then I thought it really just like took up time for the other wrestlers, you know, that actually deserve that match, for them to just take this new guy who's only wrestled two people on the main roster, which, by the way, was AJ Styles and Seth Rollins, both champions in their own rights, and, you know, current champions. And, um, I just thought that he hasn't got enough time to just be thrown into a title match all willy-nilly like that, Especially to lose. If if he would have won, that would have been a different story. If you could have built it up and he was the star child that won, like that would have been cool. I would have understood that. But you literally just put somebody there for AJ Styles to beat. When literally AJ Styles has like barely even like put that title on the line. 
barely. So, I just think that it should. What should have happened is he. They should have gave the the title shot to somebody that deserved it. Somebody that like hasn't got a title shot yet. Uh, Buddy Murphy is somebody I was thinking about. You know, maybe um, let him go on to face AJ Styles and then Buddy Murphy become the new United States Champion. Because you know AJ don't need that title. He hasn't even barely defended it. So why have it? Like I don't know. Anyways, guys. Um, I'm going to give it a down because it could have been a lot better. So, uh, on to the next match. Oh, and I also give the, the, yeah, both those matches are technically I'm making together because technically they're the same thing. You, he won the Battle Royal and then he went on to face AJ Styles later in the night and both of them, I think, were just terrible. So that's two downs. One for the AJ Styles match and one for the Battle Royal because... Well, actually, the Battle Royal was good, so I'll give that an up. So we had the very first match of the night on the pay-per-view kicking off, which I don't know why they made this, like, the main, like, start of the pay-per-view. It was really, really weird. And I believe it was just because Brock Lesnar wanted to leave. He didn't want to stay for the whole pay-per-view, which was whatever... Uh, but, and it ended so fastly, but anyways, guys, we went into the first match. We had Brock Lesnar versus, uh, Cain Velasquez. I totally don't know why I didn't know his name. Now, Cain Velasquez, a couple, I believe it was like in 2010, had faced, they faced each other in UFC in the Octagon. And Velasquez murdered and massacrated and, like, bloodied his face up and all that good stuff. That's where they built this from. And another thing, just like I was saying, I don't like it when certain superstars come into their debut match and not win. Because then you're ruining, you're ruining their character, I believe. And that's, like, the biggest thing that I hate so much. They brought him in, put him into a title shot... In his debut match and had him lose. It can't get any worse than that. Like, um, and it was very, very fast. A very fast match. Like, uh, Velasquez had, you know, and they made it look just like a UFC match. Why train Velasquez to be a WWE wrestler for him to just throw punches? I thought that was kind of boring too. Um, there could have been a lot of more room to build. Or they shouldn't even have done this match. I know that they didn't have many ideals going into Crown Jewel. And everything was just kind of like, what's thrown together. And that's kind of how I feel about overall about this pay-per-view. Because most of the matches were good. But they could have been a lot better. Like, the Battle Royal, I, I gave it an up. But like at the same time, it's kind of like, eh. Should I give it a down or should I give it an up? Because the outcome of the Battle Royal made it look like they were going to give the title to Cologne, and Cologne lost. So, they, it just feels like they just shoved a bunch of shit together for a pay-per-view. Um, but in this match, I'm going to have to give it a down. I I don't really care for Brock Lesnar that much. He's a good he's a good wrestler, but it, just the way that they build him is just so stupid. He's a guy that wrestles when he wants to wrestle. And I just think that's stupid. But, um... I, I would have liked to have seen Cain Velasquez win, but I guess he had a knee injury and came into this match with a knee injury. So they didn't want him to, like, I don't know. This is what I've heard. I don't know if it's true, but they didn't want him to be in the WWE with a knee injury. They just wanted him to do this match. So, yeah, guys. Um. So, let's move on to the next match. So guys, in our next match, we had the big giant tag team terminal match, or however the fuck you say it, which was for a big giant trophy and considered the World Cup, which they did this last year, I believe it was the last year, and Shane McMahon, they did it for just single competitors, Miz came in, he was supposed to be the one who won it, and it came down to it, he had like... He had injured himself. Shane McMahon came down and, like, you know, took his spot and won for Team SmackDown. And then, yeah. But, like, last year, Shane McMahon won the World Cup for singles competitors. Uh, this year, they did it for 
tag teams, and this year they had a tag team terminal match to de declare the best tag team in the world, and I thought so much that, like, Shane was going to come down and, like, insert himself into the match somewhere and somehow, like, just win and declare himself the best in the world again, uh, but I just thought that was too good to be true. Um, that or CM Punk was gonna come back, but we all thought that last year, too. Um, but overall, that was, that was actually a really good match. Um, the one thing I didn't like about it is it came down to, like, uh, it came down to the OC and the Viking Raiders. And, like, I didn't like that because they had the OC win over the Viking Raiders, our Raw Tag Team Champions. So, somewhere along the line, OC is going to get a Raw Tag Team title shot. Because they pinned the tag team champions. That's how it works. But also, at the same time, that we're thinking about this, um, the Viking experience was undefeated. They were undefeated in this. And that was the like funny thing about it, is they've been undefeated since they, they like debuted. And... Now that it's came down to it, I think that they should have had the Viking Raiders win it so they could be declared the best tag team in the world. It should have came down to the Revival, and it should have came down to the Viking experience. And then, from there, what should have happened was that the Viking experience should have been declared the best tag team in the world because... I th they've already beat everybody in the division, so why would they have somebody like the OC come in and win it when they could just bring somebody new to the plate and bring them up, and then we got these these new people to take the championship instead of somebody that's like, I don't know, man. I just can't explain it. Um, I just think that they should have kept them undefeated, and now that they've been pinned, they're technically no longer undefeated. Uh... I want to, I, I, I'll give it an up because it was a really good match, but I'm giving it a down because also I didn't like how they, they took away the Viking experience's undefeated streak. I think they should have built that up a little bit and made them a little bit more aggressive and make them a little bit more, you know, there for a while, still undefeated, but no. That's not how it went. Um, moving on before I really get mad about this match because this is this could have been a better match, just like the other ones. Uh. Moving on, guys. Though we got Mansoor taking on Cesaro, and I don't know why we have this match, this match, this match. So if you guys don't know who Mansoor is. It's a wrestler who's only wrestled like three matches in the whole WWE. He's a, a hero from Saudi Arabia. Last year they had a battle royal and had him win. And they like were like, woo, our dude, our guy from Saudi Arabia, our hero, he he won. Uh, that was a terrible Saudi Arabia accent. I'm sorry not to offend anybody. Uh, but um, that's what happened is uh, they had him win, which I didn't really care for the match. I didn't, I didn't care that he, he won. I just, I was like, why Cesaro? Why him? Why a singles match? Why? It was literally just out of nowhere. And I hate when they do that, when they just drop matches. Like, the reason I think we have Raw and SmackDown is to announce the matches for Raw for or announce the matches on Raw and SmackDown going into a pay-per-view. Not, oh, let's wait until we're almost to the pay-per-view and then we'll announce them on social media where nobody follows anything because I don't follow a lot of stuff on social media. I usually think that's why we have Raw and SmackDown. So they can say, hey, we're going to announce this match tonight on Monday Night Raw so everybody knows that this match is going to happen at Crown Jewel. But no... Um, anyways, it was, 
it was an okay match. It was it gave me that good feel moment where oh yeah he won again. Uh, moving on, I'll give it. I don't even know. <laughs> Let's give it an uh. uh <sighs> it could have been better. So give it a sorta. It's in the middle. It's one of those I don't cares right now because I really didn't care about this match. It wasn't bad, it wasn't good, it was in the middle. Okay guys, going into the next match, which I really don't care about, so let's get it over with. We had Natalia versus Lacey Evans. First ever women's match in Saudi Arabia. It's whatever. Their culture is they didn't want women to be showcased on pay-per-views like that. And it's always been that way in any Saudi Arabia uh, uh pay-per-view so um natalia got the win over on this and i thought that was cool you know it's cool yeah um i thought it really was cool too by the way um i didn't understand why they were like fully dressed and not in their actual attire like natalia had a shirt on and leggings and same with lacey evans anyways natalia won the match i just was confused because it didn't seem hot or cold there it was just like normal nobody was sweating like last year last year everybody was sweating this year i don't know what was going on because you had people wearing their regular attires and not sweating and then you had lacey evans and them that were just i didn't get it so uh yeah um moving on this is what we're rating this And also, moving on to the next match, we have this match, which also, I never got the understanding of this match. Like, why? I I would understand. I don't know if it was to build up Survivor Series. I'm hoping that it builds up Survivor Series, but it doesn't seem like it's going to. But we have Hulk Hogan's team versus Ric Flair's team, which, oh, it's such a headache to even announce who was on these teams. We had Team Captain, Roman Reigns. We had Shorty G, which was Chad Gable, which, why are we calling him Shorty G? I don't understand that. We had Mustafa Ali. We had Rusev. We had... Who else did we have on that team? I don't remember. Uh, Roman Reigns, Mustafa Ali, Shorty G. Rusev? And then who else? There was another person. Oh, well. Anyways, I don't really remember because I wasn't paying attention to most of the match because I thought it was stupid. Um, anyways, Randy Orton did, like, an RKO, I believe, and, like, and then Roman Reigns kicked out, and somehow they won. I don't, I don't know. I didn't keep track of that match. It was all over the place. I didn't really care for it. So, <coughs> I'm giving it a down. <laughs> I really did dislike this match a lot and did not like it whatsoever um so yeah moving on <laughs> guys and then for our very last match which i was so excited to see it was literally probably the only match i was willing and wanting to see so badly except for the kane velasquez and brock lesnar match i was wanting kane to come on top on that but he didn't and i was very disappointed but then we got this match and i was like there's no way they're going to have the fiend win. I don't I don't think that's what's going to happen. And I was very very wrong and very also so happy at the end of this match because guys, the fiend pulled out all the stops and won. It was like the best match I think I've ever tuned into um hands down the best match I've ever seen in a very long time. Um, Hell in a Cell, it was different watching that. I thought The Fiend was going to come out during that, which I also watched that pay-per-view. Uh, um, I didn't review it because I'm not reviewing. <laughs> I didn't review pay-per-views at that point in time. But I am now. I will be reviewing every pay-per-view from here on now. That is WWE. I don't know about AEW. Um, just because I can't afford it. Anyways, moving on. Um, so, we had... The Fiend, and I didn't understand why the whole arena was red. Like, I understand, like, he's a powerful god, and he had, like, that whole thing that kind of, like, Sadar, that Cesaro had when he first started, where he could make the light dimmed or whatever. 
Uh, if you guys remember when Cesaro first started, you know what I'm talking about. Anyways, um, it was kind of like that, and I thought that was kind of weird, but I thought it was kind of cool at the same time. I don't know, um, but I was really, really into this match, and I was like literally in this back room watching it off my phone, and I was like on the edge of my seat, like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, and it was so, it was so cool, like, to see it, um, it looked like, uh, Seth Rollins had a couple moments where he was really going to dominate and destroy and regain his title. And uh, there was a couple points where he was like trying to pull out all the stops, coming, trying to come up with some creative stuff. Uh, there was one point where um, uh, Bray Wyatt had used one of the announcement tables and had Seth Rollins on the other announcement table and like ran and tried to do like his little back move, which I forget what the name is. I feel so stupid right now. I'm sorry. My mind's all over the place because I liked this match and this is a match I can really, 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 really review because I really did enjoy this. It's definitely getting it up. I do want to say some more things about it because I really enjoyed it. There was one point in time in the match where we like, okay, so like he also had him up on the turnbuckle at one point in time. Um, Seth Rollins had tried to put him on one of the announcement tables and was going to do, like, I believe the frog splash onto the announcement table, but he didn't. Bray Wyatt got up with intensity and threw him off of the turnbuckle into uh, stack tables that Seth Rollins had set up previously before that stunt. And, yeah. And then we get to the end of the match, and they're kind of, like, towards the stage. And there's a bunch of, like, boxes and stuff, you know, like the stage boxes or whatever. And Seth Rollins had did, like, a lot of kicks, a lot of curve stomps, and had kicked Bray Wyatt off of this. And sparks went everywhere. It was like... They had went down there They had with their little hoses or whatever, it's like some uh, enforcement or whatever, and blew it out. And then Seth Rollins went down there to go and get him to like pin him you know and he got one of the boxes and then one of the like fuses went off again and to where he couldn't see it went like in his eyes or it was bright and blinded him so it went from that and where he had took that box from Bray Wyatt was right behind him and did the amandible claw into the sister Abigail and Jesus Christ. Um, I really, really did enjoy that match. Then, Bray Wyatt, the Fiend, got the pin. The thing about this is I don't understand what they're going to do because technically we have two world titles now on SmackDown. So, I don't know if they're going to take and trade Bray Wyatt or if they're going to like put Brock Lesnar with the WWE title on Raw. If they do that, I think they should get rid of the red strap. Or give us new tag, give us new world titles. Get us a, give us a new universal title that's new, please. And give us a new WWE title, because I hate the same design for every title, especially the women's titles. Yeah, they're ugly. Um, please, I'm begging you. WWE, if you're watching, please, please change it. Um, but overall, I give that match an up. I think I already said that. Um... Out of the, but uh, I don't know how many more other ups I gave this. Uh, we didn't keep track, but I'm assuming that I gave more downs than I did ups. Um, I know we gave two of these to I really don't care. It wasn't good, it wasn't bad, but it is what it was. Um,. If you guys did like these reviews slash ups and downs, um, tell me in the comments and like it and subscribe for more.